Awesome, welcome for today is going to be all about that barbells for beginner. Now we know that 65% of women avoid weights, a fear of being judged, or they're just on autopilot to go to that cardio because it's a lot easier and it's less of trying to figure how to use a barbell. Today, we're gonna focus on how we can really overcome that fear and really look forward to actually what it does for us. It's going to help strengthen us, make us more confident and help us really reshape our body. Now, some of us might think, oh, well, a barbell's for bulking, it's for men. Absolutely not. Ultimately doing is you're building that lean muscle and that lean muscle is gonna be burning fat faster. So you're gonna be burning fat 24 to 48 hours after your workout, so you can essentially be burning fat in your sleep. And you're just gonna find yourself just tightening in all the right areas, your curves are going in all the right areas, ultimately just reshaping your body and it feels amazing. So let's go ahead and go into some amazing exercises using the three things of lift it, activate it, and control it, and showing you how to use all three of those so that we can do every single workout so that your confidence is gonna go through the roof with this barbell. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So. We know that this four foot design barbell is not only amazing because it's perfect for home use, but also the biomechanical and the physiological benefits of the smaller bar makes it so it centers the weight over the midline of our body, which makes it so we have more control, more effectively isolating the target muscles that we want, full ranges of motion and really prevents injuries so we can ultimately get more tight and toned. So let's go ahead and go through the first step. The first one is really how do we lift this bar, whether it's at the gym or whether it's at home. The number one thing I want you to first look at is what is the weight? We wanna make sure we're picking up a weight that is enough for what we can handle on our fitness level. So. Today, if you're a beginner, let's just use this bar. It's only four pounds, and it can also go up to 210 pounds. So that's what's so great, is it can be great for a beginner or advanced. So the next one is we're going to make sure that every time we pick up this bar, that we are always close to it when we pick it up. So I'm gonna give you a little demonstration here. So let's say the bar is up on a rack somewhere at the gym, and we're picking it up like this. What happens is you're immediately gonna feel this in your back. So what we want to do is we want to bring ourselves to the bar and then pick it up off the rack and then do the motion, okay? So we're going to be showing you that even in our workouts, we do the same thing. We get closest to the bar when we pick it up. Even when it's on the ground, you'll notice that when people are doing deadlifts at the gym, they don't pick the bar up like this. They're going all the way up so the bar is literally touching their shins and that's how they're doing their deadlift. So, and then the next one, as women, we, we are so like this, we're so proper, and so it's very uncomfortable because at the gym, it's very much like this, all right? It's literally chest up, shoulders back, core tight, booty back, knees are soft, and so you're very like this, but it's starting to help you really obviously get that strength and that confidence, and you're gonna feel good. So anytime you kind of feel a little awkward, it will go away, okay? Trust me on this, okay. Let's go ahead and go into some of my favorite ones. Let's go into the deadlift, okay? So we pick up the bar and let's say it's on the ground. It's right up over our toes. And when we pick it up, we're gonna have it so that our arms are on the outside of our legs. So when we're picking it up, it's about shoulder distance apart. Now, what we do here is we're gonna lock our shoulders down pull our chest up and we're gonna drop the booty down. So when we pick it up, we're pushing the heels into the ground and that's where we're gonna be putting more emphasis into our posterior chain. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it again with each other. So we're gonna just keep that bar nice and close to our body, bringing it down the legs. We lock everything in, that bar is nice and close. We lift the chest, drop the shoulders, drop the booty, and then we're gonna stand up, pressing the heels into yoga mat or wherever you're at and standing back up. And that is your deadlift right here. And you don't have to go all the way to the ground. Usually you can stop right at your shins because that's usually where you'll have plates on both sides. What a great one to really reshaping your booty and reshaping your legs. Core is nice and tight. Chest is always lifted. Booty drops down lower than the chest. If you're a beginner, you can just go slight little bends in the knees. If you're a little bit more advanced, you can drop it low. Good, come on, let's do three more. Oh, I love that burn. Awesome. My next favorite one is the RDL. Same thing as a deadlift, but they call this the straight leg deadlift. 
Romanian deadlifts essentially is a soft knee, but all that's happening now is you're sending the hips back. So instead of dropping the knees, instead you're sending the hips back, the bar is really close to your body. So do it with me. Feet are about shoulder distance apart. Knees are soft and you're just sending the hip back and the bar goes to about shin height and then back up. That's it, keep going. I just want you to feel it. Now, this is very important to make sure you're activating your core because that's gonna help protect your low back. So through this movement, I want you to focus on just that belly button, just bringing it back towards the spine so that you have almost just like a back brace and it's your whole transverse abdominals, keeping everything nice and tight. And what you want when you go back, you're almost sending all of your weight through your heels. Your toes might slightly lift up in your shoes and that's okay. We want that nice good stretch through the hamstrings and this is a great one ladies to help with that cellulite. Well, let's do 10 together so we can really feel it. So send the booty back, knees are soft and back up. Again, try to feel this through your glutes and your hamstrings and that core is nice and tight. Go right about to your shin. You never want to lose your back through any of this. So keep that back nice and flat. There's a stiff rod right from your head to your booty. There's no movement at all there. Good, let's do three more. If you are feeling that your heels and your toes are slightly lifting, Next one we wanna go into, just the simple bicep curl, all right? What a great one for really tightening and toning the biceps. So flipping the hands so that we're palms up, where again, we're about shoulder distance holding onto that bar. Again, never your legs are together like this. Let's open them up, girls. <laughs> Soft knees, core tight, and we're gonna go into that bicep curl. Now, we can do this with just pulling it up with pretty much our ligaments and our tendons and barely any of our muscle, or we can really activate our muscle. We activate, we squeeze the muscles, and then we really control it. So it really kind of takes the swinging out, and it takes all the movement out, and we focus on really controlling it. And that's where you're gonna get the best results, because now we're activating the muscle, rather than just using ligaments and tendons, okay? Good. Let's do a couple more of those so you can kind of feel it. We're gonna get a whole body workout today. I didn't tell you this yet, but here you go. Whole body workout. Beautiful. All right, next one, we're gonna go into the upright row. This is a phenomenal one for getting that bar up over your back. So you're gonna bring that bar up above your chest and back down. Now notice the bar is really close to my body. Why? To not torque my lower back. So my elbows have to go high in order for that bar to remain close to my body. You do not want to see this. Notice how far away that bar is and how that's not gonna be good for my low back. So everyone do this with me right now. All right, next one, let's go into a squat instead. So again, same thing, we wanna keep that bar as close to our body that we possibly can. So I've commonly seen this for somebody to get that bar up over their head, but notice that bar is very far away from our body. And maybe it's fine if it's four pounds, but can you imagine if we start lifting 40, 60 pounds or plus with each other, right? So we wanna make sure that we're doing it correctly. So first thing is we have to bring those elbows up in order for us to keep that bar as close that we can to our body. And then right here, we drop the elbows and that's when we bring it up over our head and that is when we can rest it onto our back. Now notice that it's never on my actual neck up here. I'm resting it on kind of the meteor area, so more lower than the neck. So never place it directly on the neck. All right, so same thing. Remember that nice, good grounding. So open those legs, have a nice soft knee, that core is nice and tight. Those shoulders are pulled down and back and down. And then we're gonna go ahead and just go into that squat. And now notice that I didn't go down in my squat, I went back with my squat. So extremely important, you're sending those hips back and then you go down. So 
back and then down. Even if you have to do it like that first, back and then down. Then you'll make sure you are really shaping that booty and those legs correctly and making sure you have the perfect form. Where you should be feeling this, you'll always be activating your core. So you're always getting a core exercise and you're always gonna be feeling this through your legs and your glutes. If you feel that, then you're doing it right. All right, so let's go ahead and go into those squats. So do them with me. Grab that bar of yours, send the hips back, and then drop it down. Good, and check in on those knees. Make sure they're not caving in like this. That's why a booty band is really great because you can push against those knees or push against the band and make those knees go out instead of in. Good work. Come on, two more. Good work. Okay, so the next one, same thing with the weight right here. We're gonna go into what's called a good morning. Soft knees, and now here's the thing is the knees never bend. All that you're doing now is you're just gonna hinge the hips. It's almost like we were doing the deadlifts, those straight leg or those RDL deadlifts at the beginning, except instead of the hands um, down here, now the hands are holding it up here. And what a fabulous one for the glutes and for the hamstrings to help really reduce the cellulite and to really reshape that whole area back there. Awesome, okay, do this one with me so you can feel it. You wanna feel the glutes and the hamstrings here. All right, so send the hips back, soft knees. Remember, you're not hyperextending those knees. Feel it. Now, just notice that your head isn't cranked up like this either. You're looking down at the ground. That core is nice and tight. All the weight is in those heels. The next one let's go into is a lunge. Now you can do this by holding the bar up over the head. You can hold the bar right here, how we had it, or I've actually seen where you can have it right underneath the legs. So when we pick up the bar, again, we're gonna kind of do it like we did the deadlift. We're never having our chest down when we pick things up. Our boobs are always lifted before we pick something up. So remember that. Boobs are up, booties down. And then we're gonna go ahead and go into our lunges. Now, what I personally like, if you're a beginner and you're doing lunges for the first time, first thing is lunges are really off balancing because obviously they're one leg in front, one leg behind. So if you need to hold onto a wall or a chair for balance and just use a dumbbell in your hand or your own body weight, that's totally fine. What I highly don't recommend is forward stepping lunges, especially if you're a beginner, these ones, because they can be very detrimental to your knees. You don't have as much control and you're kind of putting a lot of pressure into it. So what I recommend is the reverse lunges where you're stepping it back. And that's where you have more control and you can really activate and you can find yourself really feeling the, the booty burn a lot more. So either stationary lunges, just going down and up or the reverse lunges instead. So you ready to do it with me? All right, whatever you wanna do, let's do 10 on each side. Here we go. Remember, keep that core nice and tight. Remember, that is your back brace. And you're getting an ab exercise the whole entire time. So many people ask me, Danita, what do you do for ab exercises? I say, oh, in every one of my workouts, I do it. Good, and switch to the other side. You wanna to try to focus on having that good 90 degree angle in your legs so that you're pushing with your front heel to come up. Remember your heel is what activates that booty. Heel activates that booty. <gasps> See, I'm already out of breath. This is way better than cardio because you're getting cardio and balancing and strength training and confidence and so many things. Uh, way more calorie burning too. Awesome, so great job on sculpting and toning with me today. If you're a beginner or you're advanced, you are all welcome into the Booty Bands and Barbells community. Make sure to come check us out in the Booty Bands and Barbells app where you have certified personal trainers that are walking you through every single step like I just showed you today. So if you're ready for more of that, come join us and I'll see you in the app. Bye.